Hello guys, welcome to Kenya School of Flying. My name is Captain Cecilio Jamus and we're going to learn how to do a pre-flight. Follow me. So, on approach to the aircraft, initially, I want to ensure the aircraft is not back on any slope. Uh, there's no obstruction, it's very easy to taxi out. It looks quite well. General condition is okay. And we look at the nose oil, it's looking good. Then, we remove all covers. Just remove this, and as you can see, it's written remove before flight. Okay, also, we have the engine cover, remove it. So, make sure everything is looking good, and we have the nose oil. Looks good for now. Ensure chokes are in place. Once you confirm that, then we get into the cockpit. First things first, you remove the control lock. So we secure it, possibly behind the seat, and remove the sun visor. And you fold it nicely. Secure it and put it behind the seats. Check the first aid kit. All components are okay. You can check the list. The validity is okay. And secure it. Put it back. Check uh, the fire extinguisher, expire date, and ensure it's secure. Then you check uh, aircraft documents are in place. Master on, fuel gauges rise steadily. So master is on, ammeter is uh, discharging. Okay, circuit breakers and fuses are all in. Okay, and now lower flaps in stages from my zero to first stage is at 10 degrees look outside second stage 20 degrees and third stage is 30 degrees so uh, taxi landing lights initially put them off beacon on nav lights off and the dome lights are off and we check for serviceability and we check the fuel gauges now we put the master off okay and also ensure the magneto is off keys are out if uh, remove the control lock already okay so time now to go out for the external checks as we leave the cockpit we have three things that we take with us so uh, we have the fuel strainer uh, have the dipstick and a rug for checking the oil so as you leave the cockpit you want to check the aircraft for that loose screws rivets any abnormalities and general condition of the aircraft so i'm going to start by checking the door is fully secure the fuel drain just to ensure our fuel is clean check the tire condition brake line hydraulic uh, brake disc and you have the caliper check the tire inflation and the creep mark to ensure it's in place yeah, that should be good. We'll check the flaps. Okay, ensure it's secure. And there's a free movement here. Well lubricated. We'll check all inspection panels. Ensure there are no loose screws. This one is very secure. And then as we proceed towards the wingtip, we check the aileron. Ensure free movement. And ensure there's a bit of movement here. The hinge is well lubricated. Then towards the tip, 
we have the mass balance to reduce flutter on uh, the ailerons and we check the lower and the upper surfaces of the wing and we check the wing tip navigation light looks good for now and we check the wing leading edge for any abnormalities looks good for now we have the stall warner so it's also very important to check your stall warner to see if it's working or not in case you'll be doing any upper air works you want to ensure you'll be able to feel and hear the sound so to check the stall warner it's very easy just go straight towards it and you suck air from it and that's a sound you get on a really stall warner so that's operational check the wing strut looks good for now quite firm all right then we check the fuel breather so this one is mainly to drain excess fuel and to balance the pressure in the tanks so it's not uh, obstructed or blocked it's good to check the pitot head it's not obstructed it's all good inspection panel looking good and the wing strut looks good cabin air intake it's okay check out is secure then going to check my fuel okay so it's about uh, three quarter so on a standard 150 tank it's usually about four hours so four quarts gives us about two hours so half should be about an hour and one quart should be about 30 minutes so once you check the fuel then uh, you come to this section here where you check the static source as you can see it's written static source keep clear it's not uh, obstructed it looks clear and you check the avionics cooling vent it's okay all right so uh, we check the propeller so it's uh, secure check the condition looks quite well for now and check the spinner the flywheel and uh, alternator belt and, and the alternator itself check the landing light you have the carburetor uh, air intake and the filter is okay we also confirm the nose oil looking good from this side the exhaust looks good and also we confirm our shimmy damper should be okay it's firm our torque link looks good and uh, the actuator rods are okay and the nose wheel tire condition the creep mark looks good and uh, we also drain the engine to ensure if there's any contamination and all that okay so let me confirm that Okay, this looks good for now. And now we open up the cowling to check our fuel. Our correction to check the oil. So open it. So using the rug, secure it. And I clean. Again, so I measure the quantity so it's clear. So, on this aircraft, uh, the minimum should be six quarts. Okay, so I'm sure that's okay. All components looking good, then I secure it. Good, once we are done with the nose, com uh, the nose compartment, now I'll move on to the starboard side or the right side. So here we're going to repeat the same things that we did on the port or the left side. Now the only difference we have on this side is uh, we don't have a pitot head and we don't have a stall warner. So we check the aerials, we have the comb, or what we use for communication, and uh, we have the ADF aerial, you have the ELT or the emergency located transmitter, check the spiral date, 
and the area looks quite good so you check the fin okay check the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer and you come down to check the elevator check the elevator for free movement and correct sense check the static brakes or discharges then you have the trim tap check to secure check the rudder and the fixed tap free movement check the navigation light and the beacon light also repeat the same on this side just to ensure it's also well lubricated and not giving you any funny sound good so once you reach this particular point it's like your starting point yeah that makes the end of your pre-flight segment now into the second segment which is the flight itself just follow me again right hello once again and welcome on board now we're in the cockpit which is the control room basically okay now one thing to note it's always a good thing to have a correct posture once you're in the cockpit and by that i'm referring to a sitting position you don't really want to sit uh, too low or too high because that's going to affect your outside view so you want to have an optimum view whereby you can see the front part of the cowling and also moderately see the instruments so you have a balance of the outside view and the instruments and also something else uh the rudder you also need a particular shape so something else to note uh, about the rudder pedals and of course you have the rudder and the brakes on top so you don't want to sit too aft in a way that you won't be able to control it becomes a bit hard neither don't you want to sit too forward to an extent you can't really move your legs you see that's it becomes a bit uncomfortable so for optimum position you need to have at least about 135 degrees posture on your feet and uh, you should be very much comfortable yeah once you set or you sit your you have a proper posture on the seats then you can have your seat belt on this is this are the shoulder harness you buckle up nicely okay and you ensure you can reach all the components in the cockpit freely and you are secure okay and you're ready to fly so thanks a lot for watching hope you learned something i was your captain cestilo jamos have a nice time